Hey, speaking of that, a, a group of Senate Democrats are pushing the Freedom to Vote Act. Yeah, it's a compromised version of the For the People Act, and it's one, two, three, the third voting rights bill being discussed on Capitol Hill. But even after scaling the legislation back, Republicans still are not going to cooperate, say they won't vote for the bill. Here's BNC's White House correspondent, Ariana Manis, with the story. Voting rights reform has not happened yet. Melanie Campbell with the Black Women's Roundtable Coalition has been on the front lines of the fight to preserve the right to vote. Campbell says she There's isn't sold on whether the Freedom to, to Vote Act time, will quick. do hey, that hey. yet. We have to do our do our due diligence, talk to our people on the ground and in the states uh, that, that we represent to make sure that this is what our folks want to stand. Eight Senate Democrats introduced a proposal in an attempt to reach a compromise with Republicans who vowed to block any voting rights legislation. The proposal is a scaled down version of the For the People Act, according to Rachel O'Ray with the Bipartisan Policy Center. This is a more targeted proposal. Like I said, that, that For the People Act is really big and it would you know do so much. Um, this one's a little bit more targeted and scaled down. For example, the mailing of ballots will no longer be automatic. Voters would have to request the forms. It also adds a voter ID provision and removes the measure to publicly finance campaigns. If, if, if S-1 comes to the floor again, and even if it's a revised version, it's still the same core of the same bill. With a few tweaks on it, I will absolutely still oppose it. But with the changes to the compromise voting bill, chances of it passing in a 50-50 Senate are slim due to Republicans still opposing federal elections. Election reform. Well, I think it's um, almost impossible that that all three bills would pass. Um, you know, the one that I think has the highest chance of passing, um, albeit in a, a different form than the House passed it, is the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act. Campbell says she will continue to fight to keep it in the forefront until Congress passes legislation to preserve the right to vote. Uh, we hope they can find 10 Republicans who will vote for voting rights. Um, um, but if they don't, we, we, we really demand that the, the, uh, the uh, party that won the black vote, the black women's vote, uh, make sure that they, and that's the Democrats, that's, and that's factual, right? Um, do what they need to do. In Washington, I'm Mariana Meniz for Start Your Day. All right, uh, we got to talk more about this. Uh, the Freedom to Vote Act is BNC's political uh, correspondent, contributor, Teslin Figaro. Good morning, Teslin. All right, so this is the third one. Um, it's been scaled back. They keep peeling this thing like an apple and it's down to the core right now. Uh, from what you've seen and what you know of it, is this good enough for black and brown communities? Well, the problem is we can continue to keep peeling it, as you said, down to the core. And guess what the core is? At the end of the day, they're going to have to end the filibuster, Mike. You know, changing the name, taking this out and that out, and a actually adding uh, Senator Manchin, uh, who obviously is the most powerful person in Congress, to this bill to co-sponsor it, will still not get 10 Republicans on board. To answer your question of, of is it if it's good for brown and black people, well, the John Lewis bill uh, was good for black and uh, black and brown people. Mm -hmm. And apparently it was not good enough. Uh, there is some concern that I have with not mailing out a voter uh, ballot request uh, because a lot of folks, Mike, they don't know even when uh, they're mm -hmm. holding elections outside of the presidential year. So there's still some suppression in that. I do like the, uh, the part that allows uh, those who are returning citizens to be automatically automatically restored to have their rights. That's very important. But the main thing, Mike, that's the, the difference between this one uh, and the John Lewis Act is basically uh, appeasing Republicans with the voter ID and allowing uh, only certain IDs uh, to be able to pass for voter ID. So this is basically to change the name to make Republicans feel good, just to be honest with you. And even after doing that, that is still not going to be enough. Joe Biden is going to have to push to carve out uh, this piece of legislation to end the filibuster to pass this to get this through. Yeah, you, you heard, I heard Howley said, McConnell said, you heard a, a Republican in the piece just said that they're not going to vote for this, no matter what, they're not going to get 10 votes. And even though Joe Manchin's on board and he met with the president yesterday, he said he's going to try and find those 10 Republicans, that's, he's going to have a better chance of doing that than OJ's going to find the, 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 the real killer, to be quite honest with you. So how do we get that done? Is it important for Biden now to take that next step when it comes to Manchin and Cinema? to convince them that they need to be on board with at least scaling down the filibuster. 
Absolutely. It, it's been important, you know, uh, watching the uh, video we just saw where the lady saying, well, you were just going to hope the Republicans get on board. And if not, Joe Biden needs to act. Listen, they've marched. They've marched on Joe Manchin. They did a moral march on Joe Manchin. Uh, you know, they said that, quote unquote, the clergy leader said they were going to pray the hell out of the legislature, legislators. And guess what? The hell mm -hmm. is still there. Uh, they have prayed. They have begged. They have pleaded. They have cried. They have sung songs. I I'm trying to figure out what is it that. Uh, folks don't understand that all of the pressure has mm. to be on uh, Joe Biden to get them to end the filibuster. Right now, Joe Manchin uh, is actually, to me, the president, the vice president, the sergeant of arms, the speaker yep. of the House, and he appears to be the head of the DNC. Uh, for Joe Manchin to uh, be able to control this entire process is ridiculous. So it makes one ask, Mike, uh, who is in control and if and if Manchin is just being used uh, as a cover up for those who may not really support this bill and are just hiding behind a Senator Manchin? Because at this point, none of this makes any sense uh, for the party in control to not want them to keep their jobs. This is going to help help them keep their jobs. So it, it just doesn't make sense at yeah. this point. And I don't know if it's just going through the motions because Senator, I mean, uh, because Joe Biden wants to say that he tried everything he could and this was his last resort. resort. But what's happening, Mike, is he's depressing uh, the vote. Those who are trying their very best to hold on for this party, he's giving them every reason for them to walk away just simply because of how he's handling this process. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I want to ask you more about the Joe Manchin and how Biden convinces him uh, to do that, to end the filibuster along with cinema. We got to do that another day. But I got to get to the thing that we teased earlier about Pennsylvania. One, once again, another state that's trying to suppress the vote that's out there. Uh, Florida, Texas, Georgia, we've seen them in other states right now. They're doing the same thing when it comes to names, driver's license numbers, last four digits, social security numbers. They want personal information. Are they doing this to appease a base that believes the lie or are they doing this because they will just want to continue to lie to make the base, to kind of give fuel to the base, to make them believe that the, 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 um, the, the, the election was stolen? It's both. It's both reasons. And even a third one, this is their messaging strategy for 2022. Uh, Democrats have mm -hmm. already said that they will fight these subpoenas uh, because obviously this is overreach, even especially it's laughable uh, that conservatives are always talking about, you know, uh, the, the right to privacy. Uh, but yet they are asking for all of the voters, you know, information and they want to do these so quote unquote internal audits. Uh, I believe that they know this will not uh, make it through the courts, uh, that it will be challenged. But Mike, it's not about that with them. They're all about showing that they are willing to die on the hill. They're all about showing, mm -hmm. hey, we did everything that we possibly could, something that Democrats fail in doing. Uh, Republicans love putting it on center stage. Uh, they love using their bully pulpit. And that is what works in their messaging, right, wrong, and different. We don't have to agree with it. We can say that it's silly and, oh, we just can't believe they're doing it. But it works to get their base out. So when you combine this, going back to what I said a moment ago, when you combine this type of energy at the base, at the core, and then you have marches this weekend, justice for uh, those, the, the insurrectionists, and then you have Trump mm -hmm. who is still talking because he's off Twitter, doesn't mean he stopped talking. When you combine all of those things, plus real voter suppression in these states, that is a catastrophe waiting to happen, and those who will suffer the most will be those local and state candidates uh, who are running next year in 2022. Yep. And because they know from a, a, a poll that was recently put out there that 80% of Republicans, close to 80% of Republicans, still believe that Donald Trump won the presidency and will not identify Joe Biden as the president of the United States. Mind blowing. Uh, BNC political contributor Tesla Figaro always keeps it a buck, always keeps it 100. We appreciate you. Thanks for starting your day with us.